Good morning, everyone. It feels so weird coming on here and not addressing the elephant in the room, but that's because I would have already addressed the elephant in the room in my previous video, which is my hair. Um, because this video is actually being filmed before the last video, but basically, I'm so ahead on vlogs that I um, don't need to film now for like a week, which is completely unlike me. And also, it just means that I'm gonna miss so many lovely things that I'm doing and you guys won't see it. So I'm gonna film this. It may not even go into a video, who knows? But today I'm heading to Le Manoir and this is my second gardening course with Le Manoir, but this time we're staying overnight. So we're really making like an experience of this particular one. This one is all about growing your own veg. I really wanted to do this one because I wanted to sort of learn firsthand, but also for me, this feels quite late. And so I think I'm gonna be inspired with not being so like, <gasps> like nervous to um, plant and sow seeds so early on. And I think I'll be able to learn a little bit more about taking my time. Um, it's gonna be with August as well, who I did my previous gardening course with. And um, basically she is the head of the gardening school at Le Manoir. She's amazing. She's got like a wonderful Instagram account. And um, so I'm gonna be seeing her again and doing her course again, which is super exciting. She's so engaging and really, really lovely. But this time, Mr. Millen Gordon is coming with me, which is so nice. And um, yeah, we're making a bit of an experience out of it. So we've got dinner this evening and I'll get to show you a little bit more. Now we've never stayed at Le Manoir. So I'm really looking forward to experiencing that side of it. We've come for dinner. We treated our family to um, like a whole entire like Michelin star dining experience with them um, a few years ago and they loved it. So then we've come and done a course and then we're also going to stay over. So we're getting that sort of 360 experience this time, which I'm very, very much looking forward to. So um, we're packing up the car. I think I've packed really well and um if i do say so myself and i'm dressed i'm wearing pretty much i think i'm wearing like the exact same outfit that i wore last time <laughs> but i'm just comfortable i've got my Beaufort and blake shirt holland cooper gilet page denim jeans and um my amazon like welly riding boots i also have an adenola crop top underneath just in case it gets warm so that i can like take the gilet off maybe unbutton the shirt but i don't think we're in any danger of that at the moment however england is wild with its weather at the moment it's just so weird it's so weird that we're like almost in june and we haven't really had any sort of like proper heat so yeah that's interesting i have a few dresses to choose from uh for this evening's dinner but we're gonna load up the car and head to oxfordshire right we are in the car i was attacked by a spider on the way out um and my first edition of the English Garden magazine has arrived. It's one of my first like personal subscriptions and it's arrived. So I'm gonna read that with you um, a bit later. You've got the car key in, this done. Dresses are in the back. We're ready to go. and I feel like I could not have timed this any better. Um, all of the gardens are in bloom. The wisteria is in full bloom, oh my goodness. And we're just having a quick tour of the garden, which is gonna be a treat for me because I've obviously seen it quite barren, but now I'm gonna see it in full bloom. So we've got August looking after ourselves again today as well. And I'm gonna enjoy the day here. And the peas are a purple podded pea as well. Oh, oh nice. Um, have a little taste. They are just wonderful because they've got this purple pod. Yeah. Um, so it's so nice to see something slightly different. It's yeah, more of a Monge nice. 2 variety. But you can also eat the leaves. Yeah. So you could pop them into salads. Um, and obviously you've got that gorgeous um, flower. But the flower's yeah. just got that lovely sweetness to it. It's a very well organised kitchen garden for a scale of this size. 
that my rose are looking quite similar to this as well. They are looking lovely, yes. <laughs> the things that we've just tried is the Blau Shocker Pea Flower. Um, so it's growing in their kitchen garden and all, this is one of the things I always say with these courses is they're really good for like introduction I guess introduction inspiration for different varieties and that kind of thing so yeah I've already got written it down and I'm going to be planting direct sowing you can enjoy garden. the leaves the flowers and the veg the yeah you can can't you wow it's not amazing ah a little uh, solitary bee home good for bumblebees and the like ground bees and stuff not so good for colonies like honeybees but we're just working our way down now to the greenhouse where I believe we're going to be taking part of our course today. Oh, that's a clever way of doing a little bird box. Look at that. Whilst the girls are just enjoying a cup of tea, these are the workstations that we're going to be using today to sow some seeds. Lydia station over here. Oh, celery leaf, basil, all sorts going on. Very organised greenhouse. Oh gosh, look, it's a beehive. WBC. <laughs> Gonna take a look at the uh, beehives later on, actually. Gardens and handed down three generations until it came to the Heritage Seed Library. Now, I don't know if anybody knows of the, the library. It's a beautiful charity organisation who look after some of the most incredible seeds with beautiful stories. What you're kind of looking for is double the depth or width of this particular seed. So, say for example, that is there, you want to be looking at sowing it about that deep down. So make your lovely hole, pop your seed in, and then you just want to kind of cover it up. Just finished off sowing our first load of seeds. We've gone for a Q blue bean. We've gone for Crown Prince, which, I, which I've actually already sown. Um, it's a squash. Yeah, you can never have too much in my opinion. These keep, they're one of my favourite things to grow. Um, we've also got Cucamelon, which is something that I had on my list to grow from my last, um, like... And this is a citrusy cucumber. <laughs> yes, but this is what I had on my list from my last uh, class with August, was that I wanted to grow Cucamelons. So she describes it as a, like, um, limey cucumber. So essential for putting into your gin and tonic, she says. Um, and then we're also doing uh, tree spinach, which August calls fairy glitter spinach, because apparently it releases this like glittery um, dust, which is really beautiful. Um, so we're now gonna head out into the gardens. Now this is so exciting for me to be here um, when the gardens are in bloom, because we've been here a few times and I've never ever seen the gardens being so like fruitful, full of flowers. So we're going to have a little bit of a meander. We've also got the most beautiful, beautiful day, which obviously the last time I was here, we were not lucky enough to have. So let's go have a little bit of an explore. Ah. This is what it will look like. Uh, so that, oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> it's got powder. It's amazing. So if you then, if you rub it, the pink comes off on your hands. Oh, really? So the children love it. Look at it. Oh my ring. gosh. So this is the fairy glitter spinach in action and I am blown away. This looks like the NARS orgasm blush. It's got a slight iridescence to it, but the powder could honestly be like an eyeshadow. It is stunning. I actually can't believe this. I love this. I'm so glad we're growing it. <laughs> Wow, it looks so pretty as well. I wonder if we can get it going in the woods. But this would make such a good thing to put on top of like cakes or something. Yeah, that's what she was saying. Like, yeah. Imagine like even canapes. garnishes for like um, drinks. 
Yeah. So gorgeous. I wonder if it would go. I, I do wonder whether it would go in the woods. Yeah. If it's quite prolific, then maybe it will. Love that. Yeah. So I think this is probably one of the most famous wisterias because it's always in the pictures of Le Manoir and I wish that you could smell this right now. It smells incredible and it's just made me realise how perfectly we have um, planted our wisteria on our house because it's going to grow round the corner of our house and this just looks so spectacular. But we're sadly not having so many wonderful blooms but hopefully in the future, goodness me. Well, we have been having a true explore of the grounds in the sunshine. My goodness me, I wish I was wearing a dress because it is nice and warm, but I've got a dress for this evening. We are now heading back to the glass house for lunch and probably a bit of a chat with everyone that's there, but it's so lovely to have like a different group and get to know other people and it's just nice. directly to vegetable roots. Ah. They can actually do it the right kind of nutrients at the right time of the season. They know what the plant wants, they take it to them, and the plant shares its photosynthetic materials with the fungus. This is seen as like one of the major benefits of the nerdig really, is to protect mushrooms and mycorrhizal life. Um, it's also the case that when you don't dig the soil, you don't release loads of carbon into the atmosphere. It's a regenerative practice, so when you leave the carbon in the soil, of course it's better for the atmosphere, but it also means that you are constantly improving the soil. It's holding on to its carbon and it's going to gradually build in terms of its uh, content of nutrients as well. I don't know if anybody's been to Chelsea and seen in the last year in one of the marquees, he had the pumpkins that were like this. Oh wow. Huge. So I bumped into him and he was like, Richard, that's pumpkin seeds. I was like, oh <laughs> yes please. But because they're not certified organic, we can't grow them in the main veg garden so this is our they are organic they've been grown organically but because he doesn't have their homegrown pumpkins mm. so fingers crossed these are going to be ripples. yeah 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 <laughs> i love it when i'm in good company i am not the only hermes person who comes with their bag to a gardening class um, which makes me very happy we've got a little cardboard stand for them at the moment so what we're currently doing is we're in the orchard, but we've had um, a current guest arriving by helicopter. So I apologize for the sound, but we're currently putting together our very own no dig bed. So this is a experiment that they're doing here at Le Manoir at the moment and testing out this process. So they're adding to it all of the time and we're about to um, plant in a variety of pumpkins that's supposed to be massive but they can't actually be planted in the main kitchen garden because it's not an organic seed. So that's why we're doing it out here because it can be done in these little makeshift beds that we're doing. But it means that we're learning how to do the no dig method, which is something that I do in my raised beds. But if I could go back in time and teach me the way before, um, I probably would have done it straight from the ground up. But now we just add layers of compost each time, each season to regenerate the soil and not disturb the lower layers of the soil. So everyone's helping out. And we've just built this lovely bed. Well, they have certainly picked the most perfect room for, well, that I would ever want to stay in. We're staying in La Orangerie and the moment that I walked around the corner, I knew exactly why it got its name because it has this beautiful, beautiful little mini La Orangerie and um, it's inspired by Raymond Blanc's grandma's glass house, I guess. And we've got this stunning patio. It is so beautiful and all of this ironwork is intertwined with these um, birch trees I think which is just spectacular and then when we come inside my goodness me this is just wonderful I am in my element I cannot put into words how happy this makes me this is exactly the kind of room I would hope to stay in and then you come through Mr Millen Gordon is living his best life sitting at his desk 
Hundred Hills going down very nicely. Oh yeah, so we're trying the the um, local vineyard champagne. Well, sparkling. It has got a slight tint of like a rosé. Yeah, yeah, it's very nice. I really like that. Um, so we have a bottle of champagne on the the table here. It feel this feels like an orangery. That's what I think. This is absolutely stunning. The way that this has been designed. I love the texture to the walls. Oh, so so inspiring. And then it feels like you've almost got like garden garden furniture inside, which I think is all just lending itself to the theme of this room. We've got this sitting area. There's little orange trees everywhere, which is just so fitting. I can't actually cope with how lovely this is and these big windows lots of antique glass <gasps> my goodness me but then the piece de resistance is through here it smells incredible it smells like an orangery in here this is the bedroom complete with bookcases four poster bed this is oh my gosh is that a tv up there stop it oh my goodness wow and these doors onto the sort of wardrobes are just spectacular and then these doors obviously open up to the little courtyard and then through here into the bathroom oh my gosh little his and hers stone sinks which are lovely we've got the little toilet there oh my gosh i think this is just one of the most beautiful themed rooms i've ever stayed in i am in love oh Now this little texture on here is something that I have been considering for the cabinetry in my um, dressing room to sort of differentiate it from the walls. I want to almost get like a complementary um, beige or white just to give it that distressed feel, um, give it all of these little knocks because I would be inclined to think that this is probably a very lovely um, antique that has either been uh, repainted at some point, point and been given that distressed feel but yeah this is definitely something I'm thinking about doing when it comes to my dressing room and I've got all the inspiration in here. Well I've just woken up from a nap I literally fell asleep just there and I'm now dressed and ready for dinner. My outfit of the evening is my new Amelia Wickstead dress and I've got my made to measure jacket from Seuster and Hicks which is in the Catcher Polly fabric. Emmy London Josie Heels and my back in 25. Let's go for dinner. Let's go for dinner. Oh, took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like this is like the most beautiful place. Honestly. Honestly, Lydia. Honestly. Good. I do, they are the kind of windows that I would yeah. want to have in my house. They're like, they're legit. and wild garlic from our own garden. Then if we move on to the green one here, we do have our whipped ricotta cheese finished off with fresh Italian peas and a lemon and lime gel. And then the one in front of yourself, sir, is your beetroot canola with whipped goat's wow. curd and manuka honey. Those flowers, very delicate. They're, they're edible as well as corn flowers. Corn oh, nice. flowers, oh my gosh, they're so small. They are tiny. Well, this is an unheard of exercise taking place right now. Lydia Millen eating a mushroom. And asparagus from the Loire Valley. This is a, a never seen before activity. I mean, if you're going to try a mushroom, try a two Michelin star restaurant, Ray Mont Blanc. The texture of the mushroom is the most interesting part. Right. The flavour I like. Oh, over interesting. I would have thought you'd have said that the opposite way around. Well, when you try it. Because it's soft. Yeah, no, but it's a very interesting texture. Okay. Anyway. anyway, it looks amazing. Look. 
Mon ami. Thank you. Marty? Hello. What does mon ami mean? What did I just say? Um, my love or my friend. Oh. Or something. Okay. Cute. <laughs> And he's been saying random French things to, to people and I don't think he realises what he's saying so he just turned to our waitress and said, Mon ami. And she's just kind of... She went, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did I say? I, I, don't, I, I can't remember. I don't know why you said it. My <laughs> friend. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> she styled it out so well. And she said merci at the end. <laughs> my friend. You meant mon dieu. I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's mon dieu? Like my goodness. Like my oh, God. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, mon dieu. Yeah. And I said, no. My friend. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, don't take me anywhere. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. I actually can't believe how many wine glasses are in front of me. We've done the flight of wine this evening and we've just been poured a very small dessert wine because Ali and I are really not dessert wine people but it's nice to try it, enjoy it with the dessert and experience it but no, not a full glass. Um, we've had many, many lovely wines and also a number of biodynamic wines which I think is a really fascinating concept and actually one of my favourite wines of the evening which was the uh, Burgundy, the 2020 Burgundy which was really lovely. Um, that is actually a biodynamic wine as well so very, very lovely. I'm now going to tuck into my rhubarb from the kitchen garden dessert um, and oh it is, oh okay I love a chewy meringue. <laughs> No, we are not doing goat. We're, going to be too blue. we're not doing goat. <laughs> we are just leaving dinner. And honestly, this is where I feel like Mr. Lennon Gordon comes into his own. So we're walking out, waiting to get our coats. And the lady comes up and she says, can I get your coats for you? And Ali says, yes. And she says, what does it look like? And he says, well, it's a pink fluffy number. <laughs> I don't know how he it so I don't know how, how you think so quickly for these things. Oh, there's know. there's me thinking, oh, he's just going to say his brown herring bed, a pink, pink fluffy number. <laughs> it does make me laugh, but we've had a lovely evening and it was very, very nice to um, experience the uh, seven course tasting menu just the two of us and then I had the flight of wine but I didn't really finish any of my glasses of wine I just really and I did say that to them before I said is it okay if I have the flight of wine that I probably won't finish um any of the glasses just purely because I I like to try them oh we've had the uh turn down surface um I like to try them oh it smells so good in here I like to try them but um I don't like to get really, really drunk, so they were very good in that respect. And uh, it was delicious, and I had the gluten-free uh, tasting menu, which was really, really nice. And it was just lovely, really, really lovely. And it was also like lots of couples around us as well, which I thought was nice. Just lots of people enjoying being couply. There's nothing worse than being around a lot of single people. <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. But no, I had a lovely, lovely, lovely evening. So I'm going to get into my pajamas now, and I think we're going to treat ourselves to a bit of a lie-in tomorrow because um, we're planning to go to Vista Village. But I must not forget to pick up my seeds that I planted, and uh, I think we're going to go to Vista Village so Ali can do some holiday shopping. Well. I have you rested on my knees at the moment and you know how much I enjoy to read you any kind of menu that I can get my hands on but it's not often that I get my hands on a pillow menu and I thought this is the perfect topic although this is very wordy for a, for a menu so I may not read you all of uh, what's in here but it says beside every bed at Le Manoir you will find a scented pillow mist by Branche d'Olive to make your luxurious escape include the best possible night's sleep. And I wonder whether that's got 
um, an element of the the smell that's in this room because it honestly it smells incredible. It's like the most delicious, but yet calming fragrance. Um, so I'm gonna have a sniff of that later. So you can either have a lux luxury organic wool pillow in medium firm. Our medium firm pillow is handcrafted in Yorkshire using finely combed, 100% traceable British Cheviot wool and certified organic cotton. Wool is completely sustainable, biodegradable. Wow, my goodness. Or then there is a temperature regulating pillow, medium firm, designed to absorb, store, release heat in order to achieve an optimal temperature. This pillow is made from pure natural cotton. It's sumptuously soft and highly absorbent. There is then the Sleep Green Vegan Natural Latex Standard Pillow, medium firm. With a design that is kind to the environment, this pillow is produced from sustainable raw materials filled with a biodegradable, chemical-free natural latex known as Talale, which helps to relieve pressure, tension for a perfect night's sleep. Then there is the Snuggle Down Bamboo Enhanced Standard Pillow. I am readjusting you here. Naturally hypoallergenic, this medium support pillow is filled with ethically sourced lofty polyester clusters. The outer cover is made from luxuriously soft microfiber which is quilted for added comfort and enhanced with bamboo. The memory foam pillow, firm. Sleep more soundly with our memory foam comfort pillow. This pillow includes a mix of both memory foam and hollow fibers. The soothing memory foam moulds to the contours of your head and neck, providing support and comfort. I actually sleep with a memory foam pillow at home, so I probably should have... I don't know whether it means... Do you think we can phone up for these now? I might phone one. But they also have an anti-allergy, antibacterial, antibacterial pillow, which is soft. They have a lavender scented pillow, which is medium firm. Um, and then you can set the scene for a peaceful night night of sleep with a bedtime tea found within your room tea selection so there's a dreary cam chamomile flower which we've actually already had chamomile tea this evening and then there's the dreary peppermint leaves now personally i would like to get myself a memory foam but i actually haven't felt what this bed feels like although it does feel a lot softer that feels like there's a good amount of um softness because i do find that a lot of hotels have abnormally hard beds Anyway, I'm gonna get my makeup off and get myself ready for bed. Um, I've chosen this side of the bed with the bookcase, which is lovely. Good morning from La Orangerie, and we are being blessed with sunshine and a terrace full of breakfast. Mr. Millen Gordon has beaten me to it. I have gone for the uh, Eggs Benedict, and I think they've done it gluten-free for me. And then I've got some gluten-free treats. I absolutely love these. These are probably one of the best gluten-free treats I think I've ever had. They're so fluffy. And I actually haven't tried the raspberry and pistachio, so that's good. Um, I've got a soy latte. You've gone for the eggs and salmon with caviar on top, which it looks delicious. Caviar's a nice touch. I yeah. Nice I think we should get that for home so you can have caviar on your eggs at home. Lovely. We've got the sound of running water outside our beautiful, beautiful little room. Little orange. Me. <laughs> we have just finished up having breakfast and um, I am getting ready. As you can see, my mirror was the only casualty from my bag being lost in Boston. I'm going to have to order a new one from Amazon. I don't even think, does the light, oh, the light still works, <laughs> but it's just sadly um, a bit of a hazard. So I will pop that in the bin um, once I've done my makeup, I think. But um, we are getting ready because today we are going to head to, oh, I've got such an itchy nose. We're going to head to Bista Village for a bit of shopping. Um, Ali wanted to come to do some holiday shopping and I, I'm tagging along because Vista is never a bad idea really, unless it's like really, really busy, but it should be fine today. 
um, I'm going to use my Swede mascara, which um, this is the black one, but I also have the brown one. I think the brown one I tend to use more for like when days I'm like in the garden for just a little bit of color, whereas the black gives that real sort of um, intensity to your lashes. And I definitely think you get more length with the black, but that could just be the pigment. Um, I'm not entirely sure on that one, but last night's dinner was absolutely amazing. So we actually came to uh, Le Manoir a, few, a, a couple of years ago, I think. I think I might have even vlogged it. It was, it was just after I'd had my surgery. So actually it must be like a year ago. Um, and it, I was probably a week post-op and um, it was a Christmas present that we'd done for Ali's dad and Ali's brother and their partners. And it was just kind of like a real day of indulgence. But the only thing was is that we ended up being about two hours late. One of the members of the party went out the night before and didn't wake up from their alarm. So we were two hours late and it was sort of like, we didn't really get to fully experience it. I mean, they were amazing here and they catered to us. They could have very easily been like, you're two hours late, like there's no way but they didn't, they completely accommodated us, but it still felt like we were sort of um, overstaying our welcome because we knew that we were two hours late and it was an inconvenience for them. So this was really nice for Ali and I to just experience it, it, it just us and in the proper way. And I loved it, absolutely loved it. <clears throat> it was also different, <clears throat> sorry, my voice has gone all funny. Because last time it was a lunchtime thing and this time we, we did dinner, which was lovely. We had it in the glass house and it's a really lovely layout. Like everyone's kind of facing into the center of the, the glass house. It's a seven course tasting menu. We did the full flight of wine and the food was exquisite. Like so, so delicious, beautifully cooked. And I wasn't unwell afterwards. You'll know if you have watched my channel for a while, whenever I do sort of tasting menus and enjoy a lot of really indulgent, rich food, I can often be unwell afterwards. This time, I was not. And so it was really lovely. And then we've obviously had breakfast this morning, which is setting me up for a day at uh, Bista Village. So I'm just waiting for a dress to be ironed by the lovely housekeeping team here. They're so quick, it's unreal. Um, which I hope to shoot in the wildflower meadow because I've never seen the wildflower meadow in bloom and it is in bloom at the moment. So I have to shoot there. And then I'm gonna change and we will head to Bista Village. It is beautiful and sunny, but it's a little bit overcast today. So I was gonna wear the same dress that I wore last night because I only packed three dresses with me because I thought there's no possible way we're gonna have loads of nice weather. And then it looks like it could be quite nice today, but I didn't expect that we would have all nice weather. And then yesterday it got so lovely towards the evening when we were digging the, um, no, not digging. We were not digging because it was a no dig bed. When we were making the no dig bed, um, it got so, so warm. It was lovely. And so that was why I wore my, my sort of sleeveless Amelia Wickstead dress. And then I've got two other dresses that have long sleeves. And um, yeah, I didn't think it would be possible that it would be n like nice on both days. Um, so fingers crossed, I can just wear one of my long sleeve dresses today, but otherwise I'm an outfit repeater and I don't care. So I'm gonna finish doing my lashes and um, get dressed. Oh, I don't know if you can see my whole outfit there, but I'm wearing um, my Erdem fern print dress for the day. And honestly, I don't know whether it's just because I get used to like expanding so much in this dress when I like eat bad things. But whenever I put this on, I'm like, Lydia, you should wear this more because it does fit you nicely. It, I feel like there was a point where it didn't fit me nicely on the bust, but yeah, very, very happy. Maybe it's to do with my surgery, I'm not sure, but I just remember feeling like, in it um but yeah so i wasn't gonna wear this today but now i think that i will because i haven't worn it for such a long time um i think it will look lovely and i'm gonna wear it with my usual accessories now i would usually put a like tan big bow linen belt thingy um i want to get one in a green to match this dress because i feel like this dress can take more green it doesn't need more white it needs more green um and i love a contrasting belt you'll know that that's a real signature Thing of my style so um yeah i'm gonna go on the hunt for one of those nice big one nice big statement one um i've got my lulu flats on today because we're going to Bista village i want to be comfortable and that's my look and honestly i'm feeling so 
I feel like I've really got used to my hair now. Um, it's weird because I've not really spoken much about it in this video because I know I will have spoken about it so much in my previous one, but I haven't filmed that yet. So I feel like I'm like not talking about it, but I'm definitely realizing how much this has affected, like how I feel just having my length back. And it's just, it makes styling my hair so much easier because it weighs my hair down so much. So yeah, very, very happy anyway. So Ali and I are just heading to the car to head to Vista Village, but I wanted to show you the wildflower meadow first. This is the dream. I love this entire setup, the way that they have the pathways and these beautiful old trees. I believe these are either an apple or I haven't actually looked at them up close yet, but there are a number of fruit trees in here. There's Allianz, Angelica, there's never say it and mock something more this <laughs> um, but yeah I love how there's like little areas where you can come and sit and enjoy the meadow as well it's just yeah. beautiful lovely okay, let's head to the car Right, Ali is just heading in to go to the little boy's room before we head off to Bista. But I had to tell you, because I don't think I told you about this last night, but we were taking some pictures outside the front of Le Manoir and there was this lovely couple. And I feel like I need to take back what I said. Uh, not entirely. I still think that the way the Americans did spe special occasions and dressed up was spectacular. But this couple walked out and um, the gentleman was wearing a cravat and a blazer and an open collar shirt. He looked so smart. They must have been in their 80s. And the lady was wearing, oh my goodness, she was wearing the most beautiful shirt dress I have ever seen. And she had pointed toe flats on and they matched perfectly with her dress. And I just thought to myself, England, we do it. We do it well too. We do. And I didn't ever want anything that I said. I feel like there are some things that it's really difficult to talk about online. Um, age being one of them. And I'm never the best with my words. But like, I just, I just don't have a great vocabulary. I wish I did. And sometimes communicating myself is not the easiest. I don't find it particularly easy, especially when there's certain individuals that maybe want to find nuance with what you're saying so I'm like I don't want to talk about anything like negatively but like when I say older ladies and and I think that sometimes and I feel it too you feel like you have to dress a certain way because that's societal norms and I really hope that when I'm in my 80s I'll still be wearing beautiful dresses and beautiful flat shoes and beautiful bags and not feeling like I have to dress another like type of way and this couple clearly enjoyed getting dressed up and enjoyed going out for the evening and enjoyed having a lovely time and a lovely experience at a very, very lovely hotel. And it was literally like Ali and I looking at our future. Um, it was just, it was really lovely. And I said to her, I was like, I really, really love your dress. And she said, well, I love your dress too. And I was like, we are kindred spirits. <laughs> so yes, anyway, now I'm going to take pictures and edit whilst we head to Bista. Good morning, everyone. You can hear the sounds of the wind through the trees and the birds singing. We are back home now and um, I actually didn't end up taking you to Vista with us. Um, it was a quite a quick in and out job. And then I came back and got my nails done with Alex ready for my holiday. Yeah, so I didn't actually take you with me. I only ended up buying one thing and it was a linen shirt dress from Laura Piana and Ali actually did really well there. So um, it was a good day. It was just, I got really grumpy because we arrived and all of a sudden out of nowhere, there was this massive downpour. Both Ali and I had suede shoes on and I was wearing a linen dress and I obviously didn't want to go out in a really lovely linen dress in the rain because it would have been ridiculous. So we waited in the car and it kind of made us quite late. So we didn't have as much time there as I would have liked, but I met lots of you and that's all I care about, meeting lots of you. It's, just, it's always such a lovely place for me to like, actually bump into you guys in real life and just get to chat and whatever so it's just lovely i was also interviewed for one of those um like uh i think it's a tiktok or an instagram channel where they like i think they're a, a um luxury reseller but they like interview people on their channel and it completely caught me off guard 
um, and I hope I did okay. I'm one, I'm one of those types of people that after like social situations, I like kick myself massively. I'm like, did I say something wrong? Oh my God, D did I come across right? And so I'm like, no, why did I do that? Anyway, I'm at home today, but this evening we are going to my friend Alex's house. It's one of my favorite houses to visit ever. It is so beautiful. And we're having a, a uh, I think we're having a barbecue there. The guys are playing golf. Her, her husband and my husband are playing golf today. And oh my God, this little boy. Smelling the, the countryside smells. You are just too much. Look at you, happy boy. So long in the body. So long in the body. So yes, I arrived home to the most wonderful delivery from Fiona Fines. She managed to track me down another of my gorgeous cabbage vases. So now I have two. And oh my gosh, it comes in the most beautiful beautiful box. I feel so, so lucky. Um, I'm going to leave it in the box because actually the box is making me seem happy with all of the green. I'm happy to be home with my pups. I think I'm going to make myself a smoothie this morning. I'm going to make um, a smoothie with my spinach. I might sit and finally get to read my first, my first one of the uh, English garden. So I basically subscribed to this after I went to... Coworth, Coworth, is it Coworth or Coworth? Coworth Park, Coworth Park, whichever. I went there and it was in Ali's dad and stepmom's room and I flicked through it and I was like, I'm gonna sign up to this, so I did. Um, so I might sit on the terrace and read for a little bit. I also want to do some weeding, potentially make something to go to Alex. And I don't know if she'll want me to make anything because Alex is like a culinary goddess herself. So I don't know if she'll want me to bring, maybe I'll bring some lettuce or something like that, but I'm going makeup free for the moment. And I am wearing, a dr uh, not a dress, I'm wearing a skirt from my collection coming from Karen Linen. This is a linen skirt, fully lined to the floor. Well, not to the floor, it's to the ankle, so a really elegant length. I've popped a little crop top underneath because what I'll do is I'll probably take the shirt off or just leave it like this. Oh, I actually quite like it like that. I feel very, very English country grandmother vibes in this. I know that um, <laughs> that's my little thing that I invented, but yeah, English country grandmother vibes this is because it's just very effortless and white and ethereal, and I love that. Um, also, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the um, no dig method because I think it might be something that's quite interesting for a lot of people and I don't think I went into extreme detail on it in the actual class but basically the no dig method is t it removes the old way of um, essentially when you re re-nourish your beds and soil what they used to do is dig quite an, a, a large amount down dig out the soil and then completely replace it um, and what that does is release a hell of a lot of, um, I believe it's like gases, I think it's like carbon. It's been acknowledged for a very, very long time that it's not great to do that. And it's also not necessary. So this method is essentially like, you can just find an area on your lawn, if you have a lawn, mark out your bed, lay down some cardboard. So the cardboard removes the light um, from getting to the grass. So stops the grass from growing, kills the grass. And then you just pop a layer of compost on the top and pat it down, you water the, the cardboard down, pat it down, and then you just plant straight into it. And what, the, what, what it's said to do is that all of the worms and bugs and what, what have you that's below come up searching for this new nutritious compost. They bring it down and it just kind of merges. And what you do is you're not disturbing the, the natural ecosystem of the, the soils. You're not releasing those gases and you're just re-nourishing the soils in that way. I'm guessing that this probably goes hand in hand with a lot of the biodynamic farming that I learned about in, in Ibiza, in the sense that this is probably what we can do better in our gardens and we can just not disturb the soil and just layer on, refeed, re-nourish, um, and just keep doing that rather than digging up, replacing, disturbing those ecosystems because they describe the soil of the earth as the gut of the earth which if you are into anything to do with like the microbiome and gut health and things like that, um, you'll know that it's all about those healthy bacteria, those healthy 
living organisms that naturally occur there and nourishing those and so if you think about the the soil as the gut of the earth it sort of makes you understand a little bit more about why this process is so celebrated and encouraged and there's a real kind of movement around it so um yes it's super easy literally we just walked up there was a patch of grass we marked it out and then we just laid down our cardboard and that was it so if you're someone that's got an expansive lawn and you're thinking i really want to get growing this is a really great way for you to start doing so obviously i'd plan it out so it's beautiful and you know put some thought into it but it's really that simple it took us probably half an hour to build this bed you don't need raised beds i probably think if i could do things differently i would maybe go for lower beds in my kitchen garden because it's just not necessary um i don't struggle with a lot of things trying to get into the beds other than little sausage dogs um so yeah anyway i wanted to tell you a little bit more about it you can obviously explore um there's a really knowledgeable person on it called charles dowding so charles dowding so if you want to to discover him i'll link his instagram or whatever his channels are in the description box down below so you can go and explore that more i am obviously makeup free today because i want to get the sun on my skin i want to get that vitamin d and um, i'm just feeling all of the boho vibes with my hair as well which is making me extremely happy I'm going to head down to the kitchen garden now and get harvesting. The thing that I've realized about my kitchen garden is um, my beds were actually turned off for a considerable amount of time. So the watering system that I have in my beds that make it manageable for me to have my beds in this way because there's big beds, there's a lot to water. So we put in this um, drip leaky hose watering system and they've been turned off and nobody told me and I quickly put my foot down and stamped my foot and I was like put my beds back on basically we're waiting for some systems to be changed to more environmentally friendly systems like in our front beds and we they turned my beds off and I just honestly I'm like why why would you do that it's the growing season so now everything is shooting up so I'm going to grab my truck and head down and harvest my goods yeah, looking forward to this. Oh, something very exciting has just arrived. This is the sort of mood board for all of the fabrics that I'm going to be having in my dressing room. And, oh my gosh. So obviously this is going to be the blind. If I just move this out of the way, oh, it's all pinned together, stuck together. Yes, my boys, you know that this is not an Amazon delivery. So um, this is the color of green that I'm going to go for a cushion and um, it will be the top of the ottoman as well. This is obviously the blind system with this gorgeous trim. This is um, the oakum fabric from Colfax and Fowler, is it? Sorry, it's a bit hectic in here at the moment because I am just back from a trip, obviously, and prepping for Chelsea and also then prepping for my holiday. So this cushion, if I just grab this off here, so this is going to be a cushion that sits on here. And what we wanted to do was add a little bit more of like depth to the room. So we wanted to add a slightly darker green to the space in this velvet with this trim as well. So there's gonna be a little cushion to go on here, a nice small cushion. But then also, this will be the edges of my ottoman. So a little ottoman is gonna go over here, where my suitcase is. Little oakum fabric ottoman with this green top to it as well, so that it's nice and protected. And then the blinds, you probably won't see much of them, but the blinds are gonna go up here. <laughs> this is my technical application for, yeah. <laughs> you can't really see but the colors in here I was sort of against adding this touch of blue but it just they're just perfect absolutely perfect the right amount of like natural feeling but these subtle like almost duck egg blue additions just really give it that feminine quality without going pink my goodness me I love this so so much and I love that I picked it like I found the fabric, we sat down, we found all of the trims together, but like it's all centered around a fabric that I just love. Rather than just trying to make a room look nice, you want the, the fabrics in the room to really speak to you. That's something that I'm learning a lot, is that you've got to like the fabrics. The fabrics have got to set your soul on fire. And I think this really, really, really does for me. So I can't wait for these to come in.
So I've added one banana and one cup of blueberries to my Thermomix. And now I'm going to add my spinach from the garden and my supplements and also some coconut water. So I've got some leaves of spinach. Now my leaves are so big that they weigh about 10 grams each and I only need 40 grams. So it's about um, th four or five of these leaves, which makes me so happy. Um, I can't even put it into words. It's a bit weird how much my leaves make me happy. <laughs> oh dear. Cut the stalks up. Ew. One. Two, one more, there we go, push them down, and a little bit of coconut water. So this is the supplement that I'm using. Now, you'll know I can't swallow tablets, so I'm always looking for different ways to get my supplements, and it had got to the point where I was having a lot of chewable vitamins and I was like this is kind of like having a handful of sweets every day so I wanted to refine that a little bit with the newest launch from Hair Burst. This is their Advanced Plus Hair Formula with Trico Burst and Folly Shield and there's 120 capsules so this is like their more premium supplement and they come in these little closed capsules that I obviously you can swallow these but I just break them and dust them into my smoothie but basically obviously I'm on my journey now of healthy hair super healthy hair and I'm now growing it back I've realized that I very much feel more comfortable at this length and so um, I may not go as long as this but I'm definitely going to grow my hair back so that it's got some weight through the ends and just kind of um, flattens it down a little bit because there's so much thickness and coarseness to my hair it does need a little bit of weight to it so I feel very very happy that I'm now um, able to swap out sometimes my um, uh, chewable vitamins because I can imagine some people are like mm, it's a lot of sugar or whatever they're naturally occurring sugars but this is just a really good option if you want something that is slightly more advanced in its formulation but also um, isn't going to feel like you're doing anything naughty on a daily basis. Not that it's naughty, I don't think it's naughty, but um, you know what I mean. Anyway, I'm gonna pop this in. So just break the capsule, Ooh, like this, and dust it in. Pop the lid on, and I blitz. It's like black forest ghetto. Be super careful wearing white and making this, but I think we are cooked. The absolute perfect setup. Goodness me, I can't wait to dig into that magazine. No, no, no. 
I am now looking a lot more presentable. Um, I've done my makeup. Um, I've actually done it a little bit differently. I did three pumps of By Terry CC to one pump of my dual foundation and I feel like it's a lot lighter and a lot nicer. Um, I'm just collecting some little bits from the kitchen garden to take to Alex's. I'm wearing this Amazon dress because I wanted to wear white but all of the kids are going to be there so this one I can just bung in the washing machine if they get anything on it basically. Um, this is my little gift to Alex. This is some chocolate mint from my herb truck. Now these are still the chocolate mint that I, um, no this is the mint that I picked from my garden when I got back from Kentucky and it is still living just in water so I thought it'd be quite a nice thing to take these for her she can have either some chocolate mint tea or something like that I'm going to pop a little ribbon, ribbon around it and pop it in my little uh, I've got these cute little where are they has Mr. Miniborn taken it or have I taken it so for things like this I ordered these little brown bags on Amazon and they're just super easy for putting little posies in like this but also like other vegetables um i've obviously got the little cardboard punnets as well and my little drawstring bags for like herbs and things i just try and make it as sustainable so they're all like natural materials but they look nice as well so when you gift it it feels quite special i usually put a little bit of like ribbon on um here and i'm going to put some ribbon around this posy of chocolate mint as well any way that I can gift stuff from my garden, I will take it. Uh, I've also got some ribbon from Amazon. I could do twine or I could do ribbon, but I've got this lovely little sage green one, so I thought I'll wrap that round there, do a little bow and nearly knock it over. <laughs> I am sat in the car waiting for Ali. I'm kind of smushed in at the moment because I've got guest gifts to give, obviously, when you're going around to someone's hosting gifts. That's the one. Um, and then I've got bags for the dogs and things like that. I do feel like it's a little bit like having children when um, you have dogs because you've got to bring like blankets and poo bags and what have you. Similar, not the same. Well, these two have been absolute terrors the entire evening. Oh my goodness, I'm currently out in the garden. Um, when I was talking to you before, my battery ran out, but what I was explaining to you was every time we leave the house, Ali needs to do something like mow the lawn, loan a tool to a neighbour, um, string up some wisteria or something like that. And it's always like a last minute thing and it makes us late. Today he had to redo the irrigation because I don't know if you remember, Porter, good boy, I don't know if you remember, but I mentioned earlier in the video that I realised that my veg beds irrigation hasn't been on so there's not been any watering that's been done. Turns out that all of our beds have been turned off. I had no idea. Ali like has these situations where he's told something and then doesn't relay it to me and I'm like finding out that none of our flowers that we've paid loads of money for have been getting any water. Barkley! 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 So anyway he had to redo the irrigation and now we're at Sam and Alex's and we've just had Lots of lovely sushi, and we have Pudding here, which is, uh, is their friend's dog. And Porty and Barkley have not been around many girls, and unfortunately Pudding has been ambushed on many occasions. And she's so well behaved, and these two hooligans are not. So, um, yes, 